Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. New overnight fire breaks out at a restaurant on San Antonio's northwest side. We have the latest on this late breaking story coming up. Plus, autopsy results of a man shot by law enforcement in North Carolina are expected to be released today. And outside with live cam uh, on our way in, we noticed some mist and now it has become bona fide rain showers out there. We actually heard it on the roof of the newsroom here in the downtown area a short while ago. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It's April 27th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Tuesday. Hope you had a good Monday. I um, was looking forward to the rain, so glad we saw some drizzle on the way in. We still need the rain. What we are not looking forward to is the potential for any severe weather here in South Texas. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, but we have two opportunities for that. One tonight, one tomorrow night again, and then it's going to be one of those feast or famine type situations where we there's some folks tomorrow night. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here, but may get too much rain. There's the potential for some really heavy rain. First of all, we've got well, as you can see, it's kind of murky looking out there, reduced visibility and uh, looks like things are kind of uh, on the damp side over there, 410 over there by the airport. This is what radar is showing right now. A lot of broken stuff. This is some clutter around the radar site, but just a few very, very light showers that are working their way pretty much from southwest up to the uh, northeast. Uh, this is going to be kind of off and on throughout the rest of the morning. Now, going into tonight, the western half of our viewing area, basically along 281 west of there, has the slight risk, that yellow shaded area, for a strong to uh, severe storm. High winds, large hail are going to be the biggest threats. An isolated tornado can't be completely ruled out, but it's going to be high winds and the large hail. And then the marginal risk green area does uh, work its way a little further to the east. So pretty much the western two thirds of our area has some sort of a severe threat. As far as visibility, three miles out there at the airport for Stinson. So it's not real pea soup, but just a, you know, a little bit. Take it easy. Allow yourself some extra time this morning. Temperatures are very, very warm. Upper 60s, low 70s, even warmer than what it was yesterday. We do have a lot of mold and pecan is on the moderate side throughout the rest of the morning. Pretty much steady temperatures as we've seen the past couple of mornings. A couple of showers here and there, damp roads, and then it's going to be breezy again today. 83 for a high temperature, not as warm as yesterday. A couple of thunderstorms possible this afternoon, but then especially tonight, later on tonight, potentially severe. Then we'll do it all over again tomorrow. After that, good looking weather. Got to make it through the next couple of days. More on the forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. We have late breaking news this morning. Fire crews are responding to a fire at a local restaurant at a Northwest Side Shopping Center. This happened in the 7200 block of Wars Warsbach Road and near Babcock. Sarah Costa is live to show us the damage. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and that scene just cleared. Fire crews just drove off because they said they were able to knock out this fire pretty quickly, and you really can't see much damage behind me because most of it is smoke damage. Now, what firefighters did tell me is that they got the call around 3 o'clock this morning to Lee's Garden, that business right there, Lee's Garden Chinese Restaurant, and smoke was coming through the vent hood on top of the roof. They were able to get on the roof and put out that fire really quick. They said that that fire started underneath um, that vent hood at the fryers. They don't think this is a suspicious fire because they think possibly started from those frying machines in the kitchen. They did say that this is a commercial kitchen and they did have some fire damage to the kitchen. But as for the rest of Lee's Garden, didn't really sustain any fire damage, just a lot of smoke damage. So again, they're not calling this suspicious. However, fire crew said that Lee's Garden Chinese restaurant is going to sustain about $10,000 in damage and they won't be able to be open for the next couple of days as they clear out that smoke damage. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Attorneys for the family of Andrew Brown Jr. calling his death an execution after seeing a short clip of police body cam video of the shooting nearly one week after the deadly encounter. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the results of an independent autopsy on Brown are expected to be released today. Protests are spilling into the streets of Elizabeth City, North Carolina, Monday night. This was an execution. The family of Andrew Brown Jr. and their attorneys outraged, saying they were only shown a 20-second clip of body camera video from Brown's deadly encounter with sheriff's deputies. We do not feel that we got transparency. Okay. We only saw a snippet wow. 
of the video. One of the family attorneys says from the video they saw, Brown wasn't a threat when sheriff's deputies attempted to serve him with an arrest warrant. He was not reaching for anything. He wasn't touching anything. He wasn't throwing anything around. He had his hands firmly on the steering wheel. They run up to his vehicle shooting. Oh, no. Brown's death certificate says he died as a result of a penetrating gunshot wound of the head. Body cameras are shaky and sometimes hard to decipher. They only tell part of the story. Outside investigators, both from the SBI and from four other sheriff's offices, are interviewing witnesses and gathering more information. The sheriff's office says the county attorney has filed a motion with the court to release the body camera video. We will comply with the judge's order. Those people who claim the sheriff's office has the ability to release either don't know North Carolina law or they are trying to purposely inflame a tragic situation. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 update for Bear County. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierenberg says the county has recorded its lowest positivity rate ever at 1.9%. The mayor also reported 233 new cases and no new deaths. This morning we have 262, six, excuse me, 262 people in local hospitals with 80 in the ICU and 50 on ventilators. And there's good news on the vaccination front. More than half of Bear County's population has received at least one dose of the vaccine at 55%, and 36% of those eligible had been fully vaccinated. Some great news right now. 436 on your Tuesday morning. And still ahead, a look at what's next now that President Biden is expected to announce a new mask guidelines later today. And the win streak continues for the San Antonio Spurs. Highlights from their overtime victory against the Wizards coming up right here on GMSA. A high scoring game. Yes, yeah, very exciting. We're taking a look outside with live cam. We're at about 71 degrees right now. It's a little misty out there, so be careful when you hit the road. Good morning and welcome back. Just about 440, President Biden expected to announce new CDC guidance on mask wearing today. It comes as some parts of the country lift outdoor mask rules amid falling vaccination rates. An ABC News Washington Post poll shows daily vaccinations have dropped to an average of 2.75 million shots and nearly 24% of Americans aren't inclined to get any COVID-19 vaccine. And after an 11 day pause, sites in at least 32 states, including Texas, are once again administering Johnson and Johnson's one shot vaccine with a new FDA fact sheet warning about the risk of extremely rare blood clots. The CDC says the vaccine's benefits outweigh the risks. The Biden administration says it will expand a coronavirus aid program to help feed upwards of 30 million low income children after the school year ends. The administration calls the move the nation's largest summer child nutrition effort. The government will give eligible families about $375 per child for food. That's roughly $6.82 per child per weekday. That amount may vary if a state decides to use its own schedule. The program is called the Pandemic EBT program. Congress created it to help millions of children who lost access to breakfast and lunch due to pandemic-related school closures. Lawmakers continued the measure for the 2020-2021 school year. Then the Democrats' $1.9 trillion relief package extended it for the duration of the outbreak. The Department of Homeland Security is taking a look at itself. Officials say they will conduct an internal review to address potential threats of domestic violent extremism from within the department. No word what prompted the probe. There are nearly a quarter of a million DHS employees who are responsible for protecting the U.S. from various threats. San Antonio Spurs in the nation's capital last night going for the season sweep of the Wizards who were winners of eight in a row and nine of their last ten. Took a little, took a little extra time, overtime to be exact, but thanks to a stellar performance by DeMar DeRozan with 37 points and 10 assists, the Spurs outlasted the Wizards 146-143. DeRozan had scored nine of his points in the fourth quarter and OT. Washington's Bradley Beal had 45 points for the Wizards, but his three-point attempt to force a second OT fell short. Close matchup as both teams shot 53% from the field. There were 29 lead changes and 17 ties in regulation. Meanwhile, 
DeJounte Murray had 25 points and a career high 17 rebounds. Keldon Johnson added 21. Rudy Gay added 17. Coach Pop picked up a technical foul with 515 left in the third after DeRozan fouled Davis Bertans on a three point attempt. The Spurs have now won three straight and five of six. They improved to 18 and 10 on the road. Well done, Spurs. Up next, Spurs are in Miami tomorrow night to wrap up their season series with the Heat, who won the first meeting. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock at American Airlines Arena there in Miami. It's good to see them smiling out there on the court. I know. We're having fun again, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, I like that. Winning is fun. 4.42 yes. on your Tuesday morning. And still ahead, Americans will soon be able to vacation to Europe. Once again, we're going to have what you need to know about the deals you might come across. And next, how cheerleader throwing a temper tantrum on Snapchat has led to a major case before the U.S. Supreme Court. And welcome back. It's 445. A high school cheerleader Snapchat rant, which led to her being kicked off the team, is headed to the Supreme Court. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the cheerleader, the Snapchat rant, and the Supreme Court. I said, F school, F cheer, F softball, F everything. At 14, as a freshman in high school, Brandy Levy tried out for the varsity cheerleading squad, but didn't make the cut. The frustrated teen expressed her anger on Snapchat on a Saturday off school property. Days later, the public school told Levy she was suspended from cheerleading for a year, her lawyer speaking to GMA overnight. Students do not lose their free speech rights um, when they enter the schoolhouse gate. Uh, but the court has never decided whether those rules that they've applied inside of school also apply to students when they're outside of school. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on Brandy's potential groundbreaking case. Plus, legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. If you're looking to plan a big vacation, you may be able to put Europe on your list. The European Union reportedly working to welcome vaccinated U.S. travelers as soon as this summer. And it's 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris reports vaccinations are the key to easier travel. Their trip to San Antonio complete, Al and Pam Silsley wouldn't mind seeing Italy or Paris. Yeah. Love to go. Yeah. Would you consider going as early as this summer? Yep. Heck yeah. They may be able to. The European Union will welcome fully vaccinated American travelers this summer, according to the New York Times, who spoke to the president of the commission. I would expect there to be a huge surge in new bookings uh, uh, for Europe travel this summer as a result. Travel expert Scott Kai says that's what happened when Iceland and Greece opened their doors. So how will the countries know if you've even been vaccinated? Well, that's where the so-called vaccine passports or certificates come in. Countries and the airlines are discussing how to implement them. Keep your white CDC card in a safe place. Make sure you don't spill anything on it. Make sure you don't lose it because that's going to be your pass to be able to visit Europe and other places this summer without having to have any negative test or, or, or quarantine upon arrival. Besides paper, they're looking at apps to show your proof on your phone. But with big demand, will there be deals? Kai says yes, because airlines will add flights. Now he says you can book a summer round trip from San Antonio to Dublin, Ireland for $353 and a round trip flight to Spain, $526. The EU has not given a date for reopening, but because summer tourism is huge there, Kai's expects it will be soon. Marilyn Moritz, case at 12 News. And there are non-stops to Europe out of Austin Bergstrom, so something to think about as things continue to open back up. Yeah, a lot of people are ready to travel, or on the road, or even, you know, in the sky, just well, travel. I think a lot of people are ready to pay mm -hmm. to book some of these trips, mm -hmm. like book some of those flights, because yeah, those yeah. are great prices, prices, but we still don't know the rest of the story as far as, you know, quarantine or anything like uh, that. But I guess if you true. have that, that card, you're good so, to go. Yeah. Yeah, we're waiting for the fine print from, yeah. from the EU. So. Maybe it depends where, where exactly you go. Maybe, yeah. but uh, when we get the details, obviously we will let everyone know. Good morning to you again, Mike. Good morning, everybody. And uh, just take your time this morning because uh, we've got some uh, some showers out there. You said you ran into some. I didn't see any this yeah, morning, but, so it's going to be kind of off and on. 
this morning. Mm -hmm. And then things are going to potentially get rough later on tonight as well as tomorrow night and maybe some hefty rain tomorrow night. Interesting picture from yesterday. There were a couple. I mean, the sun tried to peek through the clouds. We had basically cloudy skies pretty much all day long and uh, notice the well, it's kind of foggy looking out there. The roads are damp. We have some light little sprinkly showers that are uh, showing up right now just scattered about the area. Not anything too heavy. We had a few of them move through downtown just kind of assume that the roads are going to be wet this morning because there may be a little bit of mist and drizzle too light to be picked up on radar. Visibility three miles at the airport, two and a half Kerrville, four Stinson Randolph. So we'll be dealing with some of this throughout the next couple of hours. Computer model. Um, this one in particular is not real big on rain now through the afternoon. There will be a few showers around here. Notice how it only has just a couple little spots, but then we get into tonight. And that's when about mid evening things start to fire up out there in portions of the hill country and these cells will develop some. There's a pretty good shot that some will become strong and or severe high winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats with some of these. And of course, with any sort of a severe storm, there's always that small, small chance for a, an isolated tornado. But again, it's going to be wind and a hail that's going to be the biggest threat. And this is going to be right around midnight and then into the early morning hours of tomorrow. By this time tomorrow, most everything should be out of here. We'll have a couple of uh, showers that are going to be kind of working the way on through here. Then by tomorrow afternoon, that's when things get rolling again out there in portions of the hill country and more severe chances as far as the high winds and hail. But tomorrow then gets added to it with the uh, chance for some heavy rain in places. So today, here's the severe threat outlook right along basically 281.35. There's the slight risk, that yellow area. So that's kind of a two on the scale. And the one on the scale would be the uh, green marginal risk. And then tomorrow, it's almost the same coverage. It's it's kind of worked its way a little bit more to the east as far as the uh, Storm Prediction Center with the slight risk. But this does include all of Bear County, all of New Braunfels, all the metropolitan area basically for tomorrow. And like I said, then also tomorrow is the threat for some uh, some hefty downpours, primarily in portions of the hill country. We might see some pretty uh, some good gully washers here in town as well. And that's going to be late tomorrow night as well as uh, into the early early morning hours of Thursday. 78 degrees today at noon. Couple the showers, a uh, couple of storms are going to be possible. One or two of them this afternoon. Thunderstorms aren't going to be a real widespread today during the daytime hours, but then tonight, by the way, 83 for a high temperature today. Tonight is when we start to see the uh, storms start to pick up a little bit more. And then uh, tomorrow back up to 90. So it's going to be really, really uh, warm and humid tomorrow. And this threat for showers, thunderstorms and heavy rain in places late tomorrow night, early, early Thursday. Um, leftover showers early Thursday. Then we start to clear on out. Humidity goes away. Great looking end of the month. Great looking start to uh, the month of May. Wow, sounds like Mother yeah. Nature is just warming up for what could be an interesting week. Tonight, yeah. uh, starting late this afternoon, but especially tonight, make sure you stay tuned. So. All right, well, watch out for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. 452 on your Tuesday. And coming up next, top Hollywood actors celebrate their Oscar wins, but why the Academy Awards themselves aren't doing so well? Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, four, one, seven, Fireball nine. Your daily four numbers, four, nine, eight, six, Fireball seven. Cash five, five, 11, 14, 27, 33. And your Texas two step, six, 13, 18, 29, bonus ball 26. We'll be right back. Welcome back about five till this will not be news to some of you. The ratings are in. It seems not many people care about watching the Oscars anymore. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. He was a little late to the party, but Anthony Hopkins finally turning in an Oscars acceptance speech, posting a video on Instagram from his hometown of Wales. Very grateful to the Academy and thank you. The father star said he really didn't think he was going to win, in the end beating the favorite, Ma Rainey's Chadwick Boseman. And I want to pay tribute to Chadwick Boseman, who's taken from us far too early. Anthony Hopkins, the father. At 83, Hopkins is now the oldest Oscar winner in any acting category. The ratings, though, for the Oscars, not great. The preliminary numbers off 58% from last year for the least watched Oscars ever. If the numbers hold, it would be the first time fewer than 10 million people watched the Academy Awards. Yeah, woo! 
It's a chart-topping debut for the album Slime Language 2, the project from rapper Young Thug's Young Stoner Life record label, featuring a bunch of his artists and others, including Drake, Big Sean, and more. And on the Billboard Singles chart, it's another week at number one for Polo G's Rap Star. And happy birthday today to Lizzo. The chart-topping and Grammy-winning artist is 33. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 457 and about 70 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, President Biden expected to announce new CDC guidelines on mask wearing today. We'll have a preview of what the new guidance is expected to be. Plus, Zoom launching a cool new feature that makes your virtual calls a little more exciting. We're going to show you what it does ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, the latest on a fire that sparked at a Northwest Side restaurant. New guidelines regarding outdoor mask wearing are expected to be released. I'm Micah Jachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, what's being done about vaccine hesitancy. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we all saw some mist out there driving in today, but uh, we're expecting even more rain later on. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday, the 27th. Yeah, about an hour ago, we heard a weird noise in the newsroom. We didn't know if somebody was secretly tapping on a weird keyboard somewhere. It turns out it was rain drop, drops on the roof yeah. of the newsroom. So now it's actually raining and we're expecting even more rain throughout the day and possibly tomorrow, Mike. Yeah, uh, tonight is then we have to be on the lookout for some potentially severe storms. Same thing tomorrow night. Now, as far as rain, it's just going to be on the light side this morning. Just sort of that nuisance kind of stuff, making roads damp. There's also a little bit of fog around the area. And as you can see in uh, that picture behind the graphics, there is, uh, as you can see, kind of damp roads out there. 69 degrees right now, very warm. And then look at the dew point temperature. Measure moisture in the atmosphere, 68. That means it's really, really humid. And we're going to make it up to 83 later on this afternoon. And uh, we'll have a few showers and a couple of thunderstorms hanging around here later on this afternoon. But the best chance for rain, again, is going to be tonight as far as first chance for some heavy rain. Aquifer dropped down six tenths of a foot in the past uh, yesterday's reading, I should say. And then the allergens, a lot of mold. Con went up. Oak is on the low side. Looks like we're finally done with oak season around here. Here's what visibility looks like around the area. So it's dropped to two miles now in Kerrville, two and a half the airport. Down at Stinson, up a little bit. Randolph at five miles. Same thing, Castroville. So uh, not anything too pea soupish out there, but just a, a little bit of some fog and part of the reduced visibility is because of some of the rain out there. It is really scattered. It's all very, very light as of right now. Just a few of these showers kind of moving through town. It's been off and on. There's some drizzle as well. It's too light to be picked up on radar. So kind of assume that the roads are damp this morning or and are going to be. So allow yourself a little extra time. Then tonight we have the chance for severe weather. The slight risk, the yellow area, pretty much along 281 down 35. High winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. And then there's the uh, smaller risk, but still that chance, including Austin, San Marcos, New Braunfels, and then heading in down toward uh, Atascosa County. And this is tonight. And then we're going to do this again again tomorrow night as far as the uh, severe threat. So a couple of showers around this morning and then throughout the rest of today, a few showers, maybe a storm or two. We're going to be in the low 80s for high temperatures today. Still very humid though. Then tonight we have those storms really starting to fire up and this is going to be starting about mid evening and into the early morning hours of tomorrow and potentially on the severe side. Same thing tomorrow. A couple of showers here and there throughout the day. Then the storms start in late tomorrow night and some could be on the severe side. Also, we're going to have to watch out for some pockets of some really heavy rain uh, late tomorrow night, early on Thursday. After that, great looking forecast. Details coming up and a closer look at the first weekend of May already. Time, uh, excuse me, traffic authority Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good morning to you and everyone out, out there. We do have some situations. This is a look at 35 and Evans. There was some construction south of there at Loop 1604 and 35, and we had some flashing lights here a little bit earlier, but that has uh, seemed to have cleared off. The flashing lights were there uh, in the distance, uh, so we're not worried about that too much, but we do have a crash here right in the heart of town. This is 
uh, on 281 southbound, and there you go, see a bit of a, the delay now on 281 at Josephine approaching uh, downtown. So uh, that's something to watch out for. And when you have a wet weather like this, 281 is one of those uh, roads that can be, uh, you know, a little tricky. Uh, so definitely slow down. Also have some uh, delays here at uh, 410 and I-10 West here going on the uh, ramp. You see that delays continue uh, to build there. So again, another place where when it's wet like it is this morning, uh, a place where you want to be definitely be careful. Looking at travel times across uh, the, the region, mostly in the green, uh, except for that 28 minutes coming down on 281 from Bolverde, 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, 29 minutes from Seguin this morning. And we'll have another update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. A knock on the door of a West Side home has opened an investigation for San Antonio police. They say a robbery victim showed up at the home asking for help. This happened in the 1500 block of West Travis. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Well, good morning. Uh, police uh, have been out here for about an hour, but they're wrapping up their investigation now. Uh, they have been talking to a homeowner as well as the victim, a man who says that he had his car stolen and then he was run over by those robbers. Now, initially, that man thought he was shot. He went to the home, banging on the door, asking for help, telling uh, the people inside that he had been shot and run over by a vehicle. When police got here, they were able to look him over and say uh, that he did not appear to have any gunshot wounds, but they'd say he did have a bad case of road rash, that he, in fact, was run over by a car. His car stolen also by those people. Uh, the man says he was parked here along Travis Street when all of a sudden a group of people jumped him, beat him up, took his car, and then ran over him as they left the scene. So police have been searching though, just to make sure that they don't find any shell casings here because again, the man uh, told them he thought he was shot. Now, he was taken to a hospital where he is getting checked out uh, to make sure again that he was not shot. Police have been out here canvassing the area, but it looks like they're just about to wrap things up. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. More local news. A Northwest Side restaurant won't be open to op open the doors later today for business after a fire broke out in their kitchen early this morning. It happened in the 7200 block of Warsbach Road near Babcock. Sarah Costa is live at that location with how this possibly started. Good morning, Stephanie. Yeah, I, I spoke with the battalion chief right before they cleared the scene about half an hour ago, and he says he believes the fire started because of the kitchen's Friars here at Lee Gardens Chinese restaurant. He says, you know, this has not been the confirmed cause, but he says this fire does not look suspicious. Now, what we know at this time is fire crews were called around three o'clock this morning to Lee's Garden Chinese restaurant. When they arrived, they saw smoke coming through the vent hood on the roof. Crews were able to quickly knock the fire out and contain it to that hood and a small part of the restaurant's kitchen. So most of the fire damage is in the kitchen near the fryers, but the rest of the restaurant sustained smoke damage and the battalion chief says they won't be able to open until that smoke has been cleared out and that damage in the kitchen has been repaired. The nearby businesses will also have some minor smoke to be aired out as well this morning. Now it's estimated to be about around $10,000 in damages and he says the food inspector will be out here later this morning to investigate along with arson investigators. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. 507 this morning, President Biden is expected to release updated guidelines on mask wearing outdoors for those who are fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, at least 48 states are resuming the Johnson & Johnson vaccine after the 11 day pause. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, a new milestone in the fight against the coronavirus. Nearly 96 million Americans are now fully vaccinated. The CDC is expected to announce new guidelines for outdoor mask wearing for those fully vaccinated. We've learned a lot about the virus in the last year. And, you know, recent research really shows that a very small proportion of infections, really less than 10 percent, um, happen outdoors. I think everyone's kind of ready for this. We're getting back to normalcy. 
A growing number of states across the country are lifting their outdoor mask mandates. This as vaccination sites begin to once again offer Johnson & Johnson's one-shot vaccine. The CDC claims the vaccine's benefits outweigh the risks. Out of the 8 million J&J &J doses given, 15 women suffered rare blood clots. And this morning, doctors in California reporting the case of a man in his 30s now recovering from a clot in his leg. The man received a J&J &J shot. The CDC has not confirmed any connection. A new ABC News poll taken reveals the pause may have caused lower trust in the vaccine. Less than half of Americans see the J&J &J vaccine as safe, and 73% of those not yet vaccinated say they wouldn't take the shot. And then them also putting the Johnson & Johnson on pause, it really made me think more than twice about going back and getting the second one. Daily vaccinations dropping to an average of 2.75 million doses. 24% of Americans are not inclined to get a COVID-19 vaccine. Yet efforts continue around the country to fight vaccine hesitancy. In West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice offering a $100 savings bond for any 16 to 35 year old willing to get a shot. I'm telling you, it's time West Virginia to shut this thing down. The Biden administration announcing a plan to send PPE and millions of doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine to India, where they've seen nearly one million new COVID cases in just the last three days. Ike Kajachi, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, WellMed is set to resume giving the single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine at its two sites beginning tomorrow. Their vaccines are given at both the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior One-Stop Center on Calibra Road and the Alvita Cisneros Senior Community Center on Southwest Military. Appointments can be made online or by calling that number on your screen. Right now it's 10 minutes past the hour. We're at about 70 degrees. And still ahead, how Apple is giving more power to users over how their data is shared. And up next, AAA out with its newest car guide. What you need to know about the latest car safety technology, protecting your family while on the road. And taking a look outside with live cam, we saw mist on the way in, but it's raining in some parts and expecting uh, maybe a little bit more rain tonight. We're gonna check in with Mike later on. It's exactly 514. Good morning. Welcome back. More traffic authority coverage. Car sales starting to turn around after the pandemic and just in time AAA out with its new car guide. Our Samuel King joins us now and Samuel, the guide looks at new cars and their safety technology. Yeah, just one of the factors here, including fuel economy and emissions, things like blind spot warnings and collision intervention. A AAA named winners in several car categories in the midsize category. Top honors went to the 2020 Hyundai Sonata Hybrid Limited. For pickups, we're talking about the 2020 GMC Sierra 1500 Crew Cab, and for SUVs, the Tesla Model Y. It also took top honors overall. AAA and the Automobile Club of Southern California also judged vehicles on those categories. I mentioned fuel economy, emissions, and other safety features. And AAA's David Bennett says when deciding whether to buy a new or used vehicle, one factor may be whether those safety features are up to date. Each year, Manufacturers are coming out with newer and safer technologies. If that's important to you, you want to consider looking at those features and understand what those features entail, how to properly uh, use them. Because if you're not using them properly, what good are they? And Bennett says potential car buyers should also take into account long-term costs like insurance as well as repairs and maintenance. It's also important to call ahead because some dealerships out there, they're still dealing with shortages of some vehicles because of supply chain issues. And we'll have more on all of this on KSAT.com a little later. Mark, Stephanie. All right, thank you, Samuel. Time now is 515 and about 70 degrees right now. Up next on the morning show, look at a cool new feature from Zoom that puts participants in the same virtual room. People today, they could spend half their lives over 50. That's a lot of living. So it helps to have a wise friend and fierce defender in your corner. A friend like AARP. So your health lives longer. This is just slow-mo karate. Just slow-mo karate. Your money lives longer. Hmm. I just bought that. Huh, I just sold that. And your happiness lives longer. That's why the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Join today. Nicorette knows quitting smoking is freaking hard. You get advice like, try hypnosis, or quit cold turkey. Kidding me? Instead, start small with Nicorette, which can lead to something big. Start stopping with Nicorette. Hey, fellas, we've got to talk. Mm -hmm. 
It's about your food. It has spray-on flavor and powdered meat. It's time for fresh food that belongs in the fridge next to our food. Now, who's hungry? Fresh Pet. In today's Tech Bytes, a new privacy tool for Apple. Its operating system will let users choose if you want your online activity tracked and sold to third-party apps. Experts say it may be a double-edged sword, placing the power in the customer's hands in terms of privacy, but it may also hurt Facebook and the small businesses that benefit from ads on Facebook. Zoom is launching a new feature with the look and feel of an actual in-person meeting. The video background is called Immersive View, and it places all the attendees in the same realistic looking virtual location. And finally, MIT researchers found cities with ride-sharing companies like Uber and Lyft have an increase in traffic jams and the congestion lasts longer. The study links a decline in public transportation use with ride-sharing companies. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Well, speaking of traffic. Yeah, let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King and see if that rain or mist is causing any problems. Yeah, this is a look at 281 at Hildebrand. You can kind of uh, see the wet weather there, Stephanie uh, and Mark. So that's just something to uh, keep in mind. We'll go over here to the wall, I'll just give you a wider uh, look here at 281 in Hildebrand. Now to the south here, a little bit closer to downtown, we do still have a crash. This is at Josephine. And you can see the delay there. You're in the yellow approaching uh, Josephine and heading toward 35. So that's something uh, to look out for this morning. And again, uh, roads like 281 when it's wet like this can be a little tricky to navigate. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are a couple of other issues. We did have a stalled vehicle here. This is US uh, 90. Uh, but we are seeing some issues here too at the crossroads area, that sort of connection here between Loop 410 and uh, I-10. You can see those delays there on 410 connecting uh, to I-10. And we can give you a look at that on the Transguide view here. Uh, this is I-10 across. Those really, well, I thought we could give you a view, but you kind of see the uh, uh, the temperatures there. So take it easy, especially on connectors uh, like that when you're seeing these sort of wet conditions. Good advice. Thank you, Samuel. And that picture pretty much says it all. Yes, it does. It really <laughs> does. And Mike's going to talk more about a severe weather potential. But first up, we've got another picture, and it's another moon theme. Yeah, yesterday, of course, was the uh, the full moon for the month of April, the pink moon. And uh, it snuck through some of the clouds last night. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, this picture looks uh, sort of like what that other trans guide camera that uh, Sam just showed. But this one also has all the fog in there out at the airport. Can't even see the uh, control tower as of right now. Got a little bit of light rain around the area. Not much. This is some uh, clutter on the radar side. But as you see, some of these showers are moving pretty much southwest to northeast. Got a few of them in and around town. Some on the uh, south side right here kind of sliding up to the north. So we'll have a few more. Just assume that the roads are damp this morning. Allow yourself some extra time, as Sam's been talking about, because it's going to be probably slow going throughout most all of the morning. And here's some of that uh, fog that goes up right along I-10 in toward Curve. Bernie stage two and a half miles visibility three stints and two out there at the airport. So we deal with that on top of some of the rain that we have around the area. Here's a, a computer model. A couple of scattered showers around the area today. Maybe a thunderstorm. Uh, this one's a little more encouraging as far as rain today, although it's not a great chance through the afternoon, it just kind of the, the scattered variety. Then tonight, things start to get fired up here out there in portions of the hill country. We're going to have some of these stronger thunderstorm cells developing and working their way across the area in the overnight hours in through early tomorrow morning. Some of those are going to be, or at least the potential is there for some to be on the strong to severe side. High winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats. Now, tomorrow morning, few leftover showers, maybe a thunderstorm, and then we're going to, by the evening hours, we'll have more of these firing up, and especially then tomorrow night, another round of some of those strong, potentially severe storms in through early Thursday morning, then that will continue to clear on out of here. And the severe threat is in the primarily hill country today, pretty much west of 281.35. That's the slight risk. Again, high winds, large hail, and then the marginal risk, the green area going up the I-35 corridor and about the same tomorrow, although Storm Prediction Center has that slight risk, the slightly higher chance that includes all of the I-35 corridor, and that's going to be tomorrow night. Plus, on top of that is the chance for some very heavy rain. There are going to be some pockets, not only associated with the just the thunderstorms, you know, even tonight we could see, you know, you get a thunderstorm, some heavy, brief, heavy downpours, but we're talking about uh, tomorrow night, maybe some pockets of some uh, 
locally heavy rain, especially in portions of the hill country. 78 today at noon, couple of showers, maybe a storm. Again, rain chances throughout the morning. There will be some, but it's not that great. And even in the afternoon, 83 degrees. But then tonight, that's when rain chances do start to go up. Some of those storms, again, strong, potentially severe. Same thing tomorrow. Breezy today, windy tomorrow. Uh, better chance for storms, especially tomorrow night with some of that heavy rain. Again, the severe threat is there. And then some leftover rain early on Thursday. After that, we clear out, get rid of the humidity. Great looking weekend in store. We're going to be right around. Uh, look at those low temperatures, kind of almost coolish in the morning, upper 50s. But we got to make it through the next couple of evenings. You were showing yes. the peak, pink moon there at the beginning of your weather cast. I wish you could see the picture oh, of uh, wow. Kate on Instagram oh. of the KSAT account. It's of the pink moon resting on top of the torch of the Statue of Liberty in New oh, York wow. City. <laughs> kind of cool. Is there That's any way to cool. forward that or take a screenshot for it? I'll try and show yeah, it. Yeah, so we can best. show you guys yeah. later. Yeah, but if you want to, uh, if you don't want to wait, it's on Instagram on the KSAT news page. So check that out. Yeah. We'll try to pop it up for you. Cool shot. 524 right now on your Tuesday. And still ahead in your morning spotlight. A first look at Bon Jovi's drive-in virtual concert, plus the Oscar winner for Best International Feature Film, now getting an English remake. Eager to return to live concerts, but not quite ready to be in a massive crowd? CNN's David Daniel has an option for you in today's Hollywood Minute. This ain't a song for the broken hearted. Bon Jovi is set to launch this year's Encore Drive-In Nights concert series with an exclusive virtual show. The May 22nd concert will play on some 300 drive-in and outdoor theater screens in North America and Ireland. Tickets go on sale Thursday at BonJoviConcert.com. Did you live with your parents at 20? No. I want to stick a fork in an electrical socket every minute that I am there. Jessica Barden learns it's okay not to be okay in the first trailer for Pink Skies Ahead, written and directed by New York Times bestselling author Kelly Oxford. The film about growing up and mental health premieres Saturday, May 8th on MTV and Pop TV. <laughs> That didn't take long. Another round, the Oscar winner for Best International Feature Film, is getting an English language remake. Leonardo DiCaprio's production company won a bidding war for the rights to the Danish dramedy about four friends who think a higher blood alcohol content will improve their lives. That deal and Sunday's Oscar win likely led to some celebratory drinking in Denmark. Raising a glass in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And the Bon Jovi thing, uh, I'm looking for it on their website, but Stars and Stripes Drive-In up in New Braunfels oh, was uh, the one I was hearing that was going to show far. the Bon Jovi concert on their screens. Yeah, very cool, and just up the road. Yep. Go to driveinusa.com. Right now, just about 5.30. The results of the 2020 census are out and ahead on GMSA. We're going to take a look at top takeaways and how the new numbers affect the nation and Texas. And the trouble with popcorn is it doesn't taste enough like donuts. <laughs> Until now, we'll tell you where you can pick up this brand new sweet treat that tastes like Krispy Kreme donuts. Hi, good morning. Happy Tuesday. It is April 27th. Mike has a lot to talk about in the weather department. Not only do we have showers now, but he's uh, got us on alert for some potential severe weather. Yes, the next uh, couple of evenings we're going to have to be on the lookout for that. First of all, this morning, uh, you can see it's kind of murky looking out here. Actually, this picture almost has improved slightly, but notice how the roads are damp and uh, got some raindrops on a lot of the trans guide cameras. Sam's going to show you that in just a moment. First of all, as far as temperatures right now, 69 degrees, very, very warm, well above normal. That number 68 means there's a bunch of humidity. You will be greeted by it when you step outside. Wind out of the uh, southeast at 10 miles per hour. Despite the fact we have a decent breeze, we do have reduced visibility down to two miles at the airport, going right up 10 in toward Kerrville and a little bit of fog down there on the south side around uh, Stinson, Randolph, Castroville, hints of it here and there. We do have uh, some showers that are moving on through the area. It's been sort of off and on. This is very, very light rain, but enough obviously to make the roads wet. So don't dawdle this morning. Hit the roads and then allow yourself plenty of extra time as you uh, move head off to work and school. And as far as the severe threat, this is going to be later on tonight. Western half of our viewing air pretty much along 281.35, slight risk. High winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. And 
isolated tornadoes possible, not likely though from in this uh, scenario. And then uh, the marginal risk covers the I-35 corridor. So today, 78 degrees at noon, couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm, a few thunderstorms this afternoon. Rain chances aren't spectacular throughout the afternoon hours, but once we get into tonight, then we do have the better chance for showers and thunderstorms around here, and especially late tonight, and winds are going to be kind of on the gusty side. We do it again tomorrow, then add to that some potential for some heavy rain tomorrow. After that, great looking weather. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, what is going on, sir? Anything big? Well, uh, we have a few issues out there, more so than we've had uh, on a normal morning uh, these past few weeks. This is a look at uh, the trans guy view at I-10 and Crossroads. You can see uh, the raindrops uh, there on the camera. You can kind of make out the traffic below as we uh, head over to uh, the wall here. So this is just what we're going to see in a lot of uh, the area today, sort of uh, wet conditions here. So let's take a look at that at the map. We did have some slowdowns here. That's why we sort of highlighted that. But it looks like uh, people are getting a little bit uh, going here. Now we're up to fairly normal, so we can uh, move on to another uh, trouble spot, and that's going to be 281 approaching uh, downtown. We had a crash here southbound uh, near Josephine Street, uh, so you're still seeing those uh, delays there on 281. So looking at that travel time inside 1604, it's 12 minutes still, so that's uh, fairly good, but we can expect that probably to get worse here uh, throughout the morning. Looking at other parts of the area, 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie, 19 minutes coming in from Castroville on US-90, and 17 minutes coming in from Lytle on I-35. So the travel time still looking fairly good for now, but as Mike was mentioning, a plan for some extra time this morning and get where you're going safely. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. The 2020 U.S. Census is finally out with a final count of our country's population. The states that will gain and lose congressional seats for the next decade. CNN's Brett Conway breaks down the top takeaways. It started in the small Alaskan village of Tuxuk Bay last January. And now, more than a year later, the results from the 2020 census are in. The total U.S. population topped 331 million people. It's the second slowest decade of growth in history. But the South and West saw the biggest population growth. And where the population goes, so does the power. The census determines how many seats in Congress each state will have over the next decade, starting with the 2022 midterm elections. Texas will gain two seats. Colorado, Florida, Montana, North Carolina, and Oregon will each gain one seat. But California, Illinois, Michigan, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia each lose a seat. The number of seats also affects the number of electoral votes each state gets. The shifts from this census could be marginally more helpful to a Republican presidential candidate come 2024. But the census doesn't just determine population and politics. The data is used for everything from deciding how many teachers to put in schools and how much money needs to be set aside for public housing programs to helping figure out where to put health clinics or where to build new roads. And more detailed data will be coming out in the next few months that states will use to help draw the boundaries of their congressional districts. I'm Britt Conway reporting. If you've already filed your taxes and you're wondering where your refund is, you're not alone. The IRS usually distributes most refunds within about three weeks or less after you file your return. But this year, the wait has been six to eight weeks for some early filers. The reason? Manual processing. According to the National Taxpayer Advocate, the IRS is holding roughly 29 million returns that will be manually processed. It's happening because of the $900 billion stimulus package former President Trump signed into law in December. The Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 did not give the IRS enough time to get ready for some of the tax code changes. President Joe Biden and his top officials are setting off for a national travel blitz. The Getting America Back on Track tour starts Thursday, the day after Biden's joint address to Congress. Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, their spouses and key cabinet officials will visit about a dozen states to highlight the first 100 days in office. They will also be pitching to America an ambitious economic legislative agenda, which calls for more than $4 trillion in spending for infrastructure, jobs, education, and health care. 
Back here at home right now on your Tuesday morning, 538. And still ahead, if you're thinking about buying a new car, why you may need to save just a little more before going to the dealership. And next, a rise in child abuse cases causing concern. We'll tell you about the warning signs family members and friends need to look for. And taking a look outside with live cam, uh, kind of a cloudy shot there, but it's 70 degrees, a little humid out there, a lot of drizzle, so be careful on the roadways and maybe possible storms tonight. We're going to check in with Mike later on. 541, the month of April, Child Abuse Awareness Month, and it is an issue that has impacted our community in a big way. According to the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, child abuse cases rose 18% in 2020 compared to the year before. As ECs Romero shows us, the relationship between domestic violence and child abuse can't be ignored. It is a tremendous problem in the San Antonio community. Child abuse cases on the rise, along with intimate partner violence. You may not think the two go hand in hand, but Marta Pelais, CEO of Family Violence Prevention Services, says they indeed do. Domestic violence and child abuse coexist. When there is the one you can rest assured 100% of the time there is the other. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, research indicates children who are exposed to domestic violence are at an increased risk of being abused or neglected, with an estimated 3 to 10 million children exposed to domestic violence each year. The key to fixing the problem lies in awareness and education. There needs to be more education so that people, the community, knows that this is what happens to the next generation when they have been in the presence of domestic abuse. And with the pandemic nearing an end, experts say be on the lookout for warning signs in children. Once routines return to normal, there will be more opportunities for reporting suspected abuse. It's never too early, but it can be too late. To learn more about child abuse during the pandemic, its impact, and what can be done moving forward, join us for a live stream town hall on Wednesday, April 28th at 2 p.m. That's tomorrow. Join Patty Santos and I as we take your questions to the experts. Isis Romero, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 5.43 and it's about 70 degrees right now. Popcorn that tastes like donuts. It's a real thing and we'll tell you where you can get it next. Welcome back 546 in your morning consumer headlines. Americans aren't washing their hands as often as they did earlier in the COVID-19 pandemic. Latest study from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says Americans lathered up twice as much compared to a year before. A national survey done in January says 57% of Americans admitted to washing their hands at least six times a day. That's down from the 78% of people who said they washed their hands more frequently at the start of the outbreak. Health officials said hand washing should last 20 seconds, the length of time it takes to sing happy birthday twice. The problem with popcorn, of course, is it doesn't taste enough like donuts, right? <laughs> well, to fix that problem, Smart Food has partnered with Krispy Kreme to create popcorn flavored like it's glazed donuts. According to its website, Smart Food prides itself on making air popcorn with quality ingredients, including sugary donut glaze. Apparently, the company is making other bizarre flavors as well, including fried pickle mm. and flavors inspired by Cold Stone Creamery ice cream. For now, the pro probably tasty but not so smart snacks are only available at the Sam's Club. Well, bad news if you're wanting or needing to buy a new car this year, expect to pay more. That's because car dealerships are facing shortages and consumers are paying the price. CNN's Mandy Gaither has a closer look at what's behind the price jump. A price boom for cars. Car lots across the country are dealing with limited inventories, and that's forcing many consumers to pay more for those high demand cars. Car dealerships are reporting they only have a fraction of the vehicles they typically have, both new and used, and that limited supply is sending prices to record levels. In the first quarter of the year, the average new car price was $37,200. And according to industry analysts at J. 
J.D. Power, that's up 8.4 percent from the same period a year ago. J.D. Power says wholesale prices for used cars sold at auction are up 26 percent since the start of this year. It's a dramatic shift from a year ago when many car dealerships were forced to close due to the pandemic and a shift to working from home caused a 30 percent drop in car sales. Now sales are booming. Last month, the seasonally adjusted sales rate for new cars hit the highest level since October 2017. But that demand is coming at a difficult time. A computer chip shortage is shutting down production at auto plants around the world. According to Cox Automotive, new car production in North America is down about 3.4 million vehicles in the first three months of 2021. Limited supply and strong sales, all causing those historic prices. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. If you're just now tuning in this morning, we've had some showers in the area early. Yeah, watch out for those wet roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Uh, yes, we do have some uh, wet roadways, not as much here. This is I-35 at Loop 410. Uh, dry there for now, and you can see traffic starting to build, but we do have some uh, problems not too far from here. So let's uh, take a look at that on the wall. You can see uh, sort of the building traffic there this morning, so just something to keep in mind. We do have this crash reported. Uh, the area Loop 410 uh, northbound, the northeast loop, around uh, Dietrich here. So if you're in this area heading up toward uh, where it comes together with 35, that's just something to keep in mind this morning. The good news is our crash on 281 has been cleared. Uh, so that's uh, good news, as I, as I mentioned there. An early heads up. This isn't happening until the weekend, but uh, TxDOT is already putting out the word here. There's going to be a full closure of the I-10 main lanes in Bernie beginning Friday night through early Monday morning. Uh, from State Highway 46 or Bandera Road in that area to Scenic Loop Road. They are replacing a bridge, so that means they're going to have to shut down the main interstate. You'll still be able to get through on the frontage roads, but of course, that's going to cause some delays. And looking at I-10 this morning uh, from Bernie, 24 minutes to downtown, and once you get inside 1604, 11 to 13 minutes. So the normal time this morning, but we'll see how that evolves with the weather we have this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Through a miracle of modern technology, yes. <laughs> otherwise known as a screenshot, we have that post that was from Good Morning America to KSAT News. Yeah, it looks good. A text, a screenshot, another screenshot, and mm -hmm. then a, a KSAT Connect pin. So, well, yeah, very, very cool looking, though, with the uh, pink full moon yesterday and somebody with the perfect timing there caught it, just touching the torch of the Statue of Liberty. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful That's night in New York. Uh, yes. We, too bad we couldn't see it quite as well last night, nor tonight. Um, not really going to be seeing the moon until probably about Thursday night, it looks like. Right now, there it's kind of murky looking out there. The roads are damp. You can see the reflection off of the uh, surface streets as well as 410. And we do have some of these showers that are sliding on through the area as of right now. It is very, very light rain, but obviously just enough to make the roads nice and damp this morning. So just kind of take it easy, and we'll keep a few light showers around throughout the day. Also reduce visibility up around Bernie Stage. It's now down to a mile and three quarters, two at the airport, two and a half at uh, Castorville to Kerrville and not much, but not pea soup, but just, you know, it's kind of adding to the slow going this morning. All right. Once again, computer model, a couple of showers around throughout the rest of uh, today. A small chance for some rain today, maybe a thunderstorm cropping up. Then tonight, that's when things are really going to start to get fired up out here in portions of the hill country with some of these uh, potentially supercell storms that are going to be popping up out there in the hill country. High winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats with these, and then they will continue. And notice how this model has most everything in the hill country. Now, that doesn't mean we won't see storms elsewhere, but that's where models are kind of leaning with the majority of these uh, showers and thunderstorms. And that's going to be going into the um, early morning hours of tomorrow morning. A couple of leftover showers for the commute tomorrow morning. And then kind of here and there throughout the day. Then tomorrow evening, things get fired up once again, and throughout the course of the night, we'll have more of those uh, thunderstorms. Again, the severe potential is going to be there, and that will move out by early on Thursday morning. And the other problem with tomorrow night on top of the potential for severe storms is going to be the chance for some heavy, heavy rain as well. Then once all that moves on through here, humidity drops off, and it's going to be a really, really nice weekend. Thursday afternoon through most all of the weekend, low humidity and just 
just really pleasant weather. Okay, forecast today. We are going to be seeing temperatures really obviously not move all that much from the upper 60s, low 70s, just to about the low 80s today. 78 at noon, a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm. Again, rain is not going to be, you know, there's going to be some of it out there today, kind of that nuisance rain, but not any big deal throughout the afternoon hours. 83 for a high temperature. Then we'll start to see the storms move in tonight, and that's when the severe threat crops up. That slight risk in the western half of our viewing area. And then that risk is going to cover a bit more of the slight uh, yellow shaded area, a bit more of the area, and that's going to be for tomorrow on top of the uh, the heavy rain. 83 today, 90 tomorrow. It's going to be hot and humid tomorrow. And some of those thunderstorms with heavy rain potential. Leftover rain early Thursday. Clear out after that. Good looking weekend in store. Looking forward to that, yeah. but we still have to get through next couple of days. Right, and again, the large hail. So make sure tonight and tomorrow night, Park the car under under protection if you yes. can. Mm -hmm. We'll be ready. Thank right. you, Mike. About 554 on your Tuesday. Let's go ahead and take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, four, one, seven, fireball nine, and daily four, four, nine, eight, six, fireball seven. Cash five numbers five, eleven, fourteen, twenty-seven, thirty-three, Texas two step, six, thirteen, eighteen, twenty-nine, bonus ball of twenty-six. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the new mask guidelines expected from the CDC. What that could mean for wearing masks outdoors. President Biden, meanwhile, gearing up to address the nation about the pandemic. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Are you finding it hard to stay motivated while working from home? Still ahead on GMSA, why experts say the way your home is decorated could be affecting your productivity. And outside with uh, Transkite right now, we've had wet roads in parts of the metro area. There's a live look at 35 in Alamo, I-10 and I-35 as traffic is starting to pick up. We get the morning commute rolling. We've got rain in the forecast, potentially severe storms, and we will check on that morning commute coming up at the top of the hour. A local Northwest Side restaurant will not be able to open its doors this morning after a fire broke out in its kitchen. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta and just a bit on GMSA. What fire crews believe started the fire? A dramatic overtime victory for the Spurs in our nation's capital. We've got the highlights. And taking a look outside with live cam, we have rain this morning. It's about 70 degrees out there. Yeah, grab your rain jacket today. You're going to need it. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Hope you slept well last night. It is Tuesday, April 27th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Tuesday. Um, I'm, I grabbed a rain jacket, but um, I left the umbrella at home. But that's okay. I guess I still have the hoodie. That's right. <laughs> need to be prepared for the entire day. Rain is definitely in the forecast. We've seen a little bit early this morning for a lot of folks got up, but the main uh, concern for Mike Osterhage is going to be not one, but two chances at some potentially rough weather around here. Right. Tonight and tomorrow. Uh, throughout the day, you know, if you're heading off to work this morning, kids at the bus stops, um, you know, rain jacket, uh, mm -hmm. umbrella, and you'll get some use out of it uh, the next, throughout the day. Although it's not going to be real heavy today, it's going to be later on tonight and then tomorrow night. So this is what it looks like out there at the airport. And again, we've been kind of watching this. Uh, it looks like it's improved a little bit off in the distance there as far as visibility is concerned. Here's some of the light showers that are working their way on through the area. Again, it's just enough to dampen the roads, make them kind of slippery, and we're really not going to be dealing with everything or with anything too heavy until later on tonight. Visibility, it's up to three miles at the airport, down to a mile and a quarter. Castroville, Bernie Stage, and Kerrville both at two miles visibility. And the severe threat does exist tonight. This is out in pretty much west of 281 and 35. The slight risk and then the marginal risk and down just a little bit is going to be throughout most of the uh, metropolitan area and the I-35 corridor. High winds and large hail are going to be the uh, biggest threats with this. Temperatures are going to stay pretty steady this morning, right around 70. Wind is going to be on the breezy side later on today, about 15, 20 miles per hour and gusting from there. We'll make it to the upper 70s today at noon. Again, a 
few showers, a couple of thunderstorms thrown in here and there. Not great, great rain chances throughout the day, but uh, increasing rain chances later on tonight. And then we get up to a high temperature today of 83. Really hot and humid tomorrow. Then once we get rid of all this rain, we get rid of the humidity and it's going to be a great end to the month. Great weekend as well. Details coming up. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. All right, wet roads. That usually means problems. Yeah, I have a few problems here and there. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning to uh, everyone out there. This is the view from I-10 and Crossroads. Really can't uh, see much with those raindrops uh, on the lens there, but just giving you an idea of sort of the conditions you'll find in a lot of the area uh, this morning. Traffic flowing well here. We did have some uh, pretty decent delays here at the interchange earlier uh, this morning, but uh, things are getting better. But we do have uh, some issues here uh, on the east side. There's crash reported on Loop 410. Uh, here, so you see traffic down to nine uh, miles per hour. Crews still on the scene there, so that's causing some early delays uh, in that area. Looking at rest of the region, uh, things looking uh, fine, but again, uh, with the rain out there, you might want to uh, plan for some extra time. We had a crash here at 281 earlier that has also been cleared. Looking at the rest of the travel times this morning, 25 minutes coming in on 35 from New Braunfels, 29 minutes uh, from the east from Seguin, and 27 minutes coming in on 281 from Bol Verde. And we'll have another <laughs> update coming up soon. <coughs> Thank you, Samuel. A kitchen fire that broke out early this morning has caused a Northwest Side restaurant to close its doors temporarily. It happened in the 7200 block of Wurzbach near Babcock. Sarah Costa is live with what possibly sparked this fire. Sarah? Good morning, Mark, and it's most likely the kitchen fires are what caused that early morning fire here at Lee's Garden Chinese restaurant. It's according to the battalion chief on scene earlier. He told me, you know, this is not the official cause, but he says this fire does not look suspicious and it's most likely because of those kitchen fires. But what we do know is that fire crews were called out around three o'clock this morning to Lee's Garden Chinese restaurant. When they arrived, they saw smoke coming through the vent hood on the roof. Crews were able to quickly knock the fire out and contain it to the hood in a small part of the restaurant's kitchen. So most of the fire damage is in the kitchen near the fryers, but the rest of the restaurant sustained smoke damage. And the battalion chief on scene says they won't be able to open until that smoke is cleared out and that damage is fixed in the kitchen. The estimate damage is around $10,000. The food inspector will also be called out here this morning along with arson to determine an official cause. And also the nearby businesses in this shopping center will also have to open their doors and air out some of that smoke damage as well. Reporting live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Attorneys for former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger scheduled to appeal her murder conviction today. She shot and killed her neighbor, Botham John, in 2018. Geiger says she entered his apartment by mistake and thought he was an intruder. In 2019, Geiger was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Her attorneys argue she should have been charged with criminally negligent homicide. That usually carries a maximum sentence of two years. And a scary moment for people on the west side who got an alarming wake up call. A man knocking on their door saying he had been shot. But police say the man was actually run over and then his car was stolen. Katrina Weber is staying on top of this story. She'll be live in our next half hour with the latest from investigators. Police are investigating an overnight stabbing that sent one man to the hospital. It happened around 1 this morning at the Rainbow Motel in the 4700 block of South Presa Street. That's near East South Cross on the city's south side. Police say a 30-year-old man was stabbed in the eye and arm. Officers say they're getting conflicting information from the victim and from witnesses at the scene. The man was taken to University Hospital. His condition is not known at this time. Turning now to the latest coronavirus numbers here at home, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg reporting the county has recorded its lowest positivity rate ever at 1.9%. The mayor also reported 233 new cases and no new deaths. We have 262 people in local hospitals with 80 in the ICU and 50 on ventilators. Meanwhile, more than half of Bear County's population has received at least one dose of the vaccine at 55% and 36% of those eligible have been fully vaccinated. 
President Biden expected to announce a new CDC guidance on mask wearing today. It comes as some parts of the country lift outdoor mask rules amid falling vaccination rates. According to an ABC News poll, daily vaccinations have dropped to an average 2.75 million shots and nearly 24% of Americans aren't inclined to get any COVID-19 vaccine. And after an 11 day pause, sites in at least 32 states, including Texas, are once again administering Johnson & Johnson's one shot vaccine with a new FDA fact sheet warning about the risk of extremely rare blood clots. The CDC says the vaccine's benefits outweigh the risks. Trending now on KSAT.com, India dealing with a surge of coronavirus cases and a San Antonio nonprofit is sending help. San Antonio Indian Nurses Association raising money to help medical facilities collect personal protective equipment and other items. The money will also go to provide hygiene kits to the most vulnerable, vulnerable people. And the Texas State Legislature considering bills that would ban homeless encampments statewide. The move comes almost two years after the city of Austin decided to lift a similar local ban. If lawmakers approve the legislation and Governor Greg Abbott signs it into law, it would become the latest instance of the Republican-led state government overruling local ordinances. For more details on these stories and more, just go to our website at ksat.com. And we want to remind you today is your last chance to vote early in the May 1st election. Tens of thousands of ballots have already been cast on the ballot, the race for San Antonio mayor, several city council seats and propositions A and B, the latter of which has seen a fair amount of controversy here in the Alamo City. Polling locations will be staying open until 8 o'clock tonight to give as many people as possible an opportunity to take advantage of early voting. You can see the sample ballot and find a polling location on our website again at kset.com and election day is Saturday, May 1st. The 2020 census results are in and among the winners, Texas considered to be the biggest. The state picked up two congressional seats courtesy of our 4 million new residents, most of which who appear to have come from California. While the state's while still the nation's most populated, the Golden State lost a seat for the first time ever. For more on the biggest winners and losers, as well as the results for the, uh, these results mean for Texas, head over to ksat.com. More traffic authority coverage for now. Car sales are starting to turn around after the pandemic. And just in time, AAA out with its new car guide. Samuel King joins us now. Samuel, the uh, guide gives a look at new cars and their safety technology. Hey, among other things, blind spot warnings, collision intervention, as well as fuel economy and emissions. So AAA is named winners in several car categories in 2021. In the midsize category, top honors went to the 2020 Hyundai Sonata Hybrid Limited. For pickups, the 2020 GMC Sierra Crew Cab, for SUVs, the Tesla Model Y, which took top honors overall. And some other uh, categories and a midsize category, uh, we, we mentioned the top honors going to the Hyundai Sonata and also some other uh, things as well. The best value for under 35,000 went to the Subaru Premium, uh, Outback Premium, honorable mention to the Buick Encore GX Essence. And taking a look here at AAA in the Automotive Club of Southern California, also judged on other categories, including Breaking and ride comfort. Uh, AAA's David Bennett says when deciding which car to buy, make sure to stick to your price range. If you're informed and you know what to expect and you know the, what your price range is, understand what you can afford, then it's going to be a good decision for you. And I, I think the biggest thing is, is remember this is a business decision, not an emotional decision. And Bennett says potential car buyers should also take into account long-term costs like insurance as well as repairs and maintenance. As we mentioned, the Tesla Model Y taking top honors overall. And it's also important to call ahead. As we told you last half hour, some dealerships are dealing with shortages because of supply chain issues. We'll have more on all of this on KSAT.com a little later. Mark, Stephanie? Look forward to it. Thank you, Samuel. Time now is 6-11 and about 70 degrees right now. To the come, Spurs fans waking up to fantastic news this morning following an overtime victory on the road. DeMar DeRozan having a spectacular night. We've got the highlights from D.C. after the break. Yay, Spurs. And some big news from Big D, a fan favorite cowboy moving on. And outside with live cam, again, not one but two chances at strong to severe storms here in South Texas. When could that happen and how bad could it be? Mike has the answers still to come.
Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Tough news out of Dallas this week. A longtime Cowboys star has called it quits. After 11 seasons with the Cowboys, linebacker Sean Lee has decided to retire. The former second rounder out of Penn State was named to the Pro Bowl twice his career in 2015 and 2016 and was a team leader on defense. While he suffered numerous injuries during his time with the Cowboys, he'd always fight his way back onto the field. He has 995 career tackles, which is eighth in team history. He spent his entire career with the Cowboys. In our nation's capital last night, San Antonio going for the season sweep of the Wizards, who were on a hot winning streak. DeMar DeRozan had 37 points and 10 assists, nine of his points in the fourth quarter and OT. It was a close matchup as both teams shot 53% from the field. There were 29 lead changes and 17 ties in regulation. Spurs hang on and get the overtime win. It was 146 to 143. The Spurs are now winners of three straight games and they improved to 18 and 10 on the road. San Antonio taking on the Heat tomorrow night in Miami. Great win. A fantastic night, especially for DeMar DeRozan. Yes, it's good to see them smiling. I think I was telling you that earlier. Amen. 616. Let's see how the roads are looking. We had some rain earlier in the area. Any accidents out there right now, Sam? Uh, we have uh, a few things are getting a little busy here, so we're working right up until uh, the segment. This is 281 at uh, Loop 410 uh, there near the airport. You can see traffic is moving uh, pretty well uh, in this area, but to the north, we do have a crash. This is uh, 281 and Bolverde Road, apparently a rollover in this area. So just another indication with these uh, slick conditions out there just to uh, be careful and take it a little easy uh, on the roads. So this is a uh, west side. This is uh, 90 coming in from 1604 and 35 or approaching 35 11 minutes in each direction and I bring it up because it looks like uh, we also have a stalled vehicle here so this is uh, the Transkai view at 90 at General McMullen so again uh, just something to uh, watch out for uh, this morning you see uh, sort of the the water covering the lens there so uh, we're seeing some more crashes also a hearing of one now at Petrenko near loop 1604 and we'll have another check on that in our next update guys. Yeah, earlier, a couple hours ago, we actually noticed raindrops on the roof of the newsroom. Yes. We were like, what the heck is that <laughs> What is that noise? It was foreign to us. Yeah, and it was really light rain, and that's what it is this morning and throughout most of the day. But then we're going to have uh, some potentially heavier uh, thunderstorms later on tonight as well as tomorrow night. Now, as far as uh, the commute this morning, we're going to be right around well, pretty much steady temperatures. A couple of uh, showers here and there. Watch out for all of the buses, of course. And then after school, uh, about 83 degrees. So we are going to be down from yesterday. We made it to the mid uh, mid upperish 80s yesterday. Still plenty of uh, humidity out there and we are going to have winds out of the southeast about 15 uh, 20 miles per hour and they are going to be kind of on the uh, kind of on the gusty side. Well, here's a little guy that's getting a little free drink from the uh, bird bath there. Great little picture. Thank you, Yvonne, for that. One of our regular KSAC Connect contributors. And uh, here's the view out there by the airport. Still got some fog hanging around as well on top of some of those light little sprinkly showers. Again, it's just it's really, really light stuff. Everything moving from southwest up to uh, northeast. Not any any big deal enough just to make the roads wet. And that's what we're going to be looking out for this morning. We also have reduced visibility. It's still a mile and a quarter Castroville. Kerrville has dropped down a little bit more, three miles at the airport and uh, some fog is starting to show up around New Braunfels. Yesterday, 87, but up into the mid 90s, a little more sunshine down to the uh, right around Catula as well as the Rado, and then going to be in the mid and even a few upperish 90s off to the west. We're going to be down just a little bit in the metropolitan area, right around the uh, low approaching mid 80s for high temperatures today. And as far as rain, yeah, a couple of showers around here. Computer models aren't really too big on uh, seeing showers around today. There will be a few of them here and there, maybe even a thunderstorm thrown in, but it's tonight when things really start to get going out there in portions of the hill country. We're going to be seeing potentially a couple of those supercell storms. High winds and large hail will be the biggest threats with these, and this is going to be working its way across mainly in the hill country in through the wee hours tomorrow morning. A few showers to start off, so I think we'll have a damp commute again tomorrow here and there, and then by the afternoon and into the evening, 
we start to see more of these thunderstorms developing out here to the west. And also on top of that, not only the uh, severe threat, but we will have the chance for some very heavy downpours tomorrow. It's this huge low right out there to the west of us, which is working its way across here, and that's what's giving us the uh, the chance for some of this rain and also pulling down some cooler air too. I mean, it's at freezing below freezing cut bank Montana right now, obviously higher elevate or higher uh, latitude and higher elevations, but it's kind of unusually cool and we get some of this cooler drier air that's going to be coming on in here and that will be starting uh, really Thursday late Thursday and then in through the the weekend with temperatures really pleasant 78 today at noon showers couple of thunderstorms scattered about possible, uh, not very likely though. And same thing later on this afternoon, 83 for a high temperature, very humid though. And again, it's going to be on the breezy side. Then tonight is when we see the chance for thunderstorms and that severe threat, kind of a one out of five in the green area, and that's up to a two out in portions of the hill country west of uh, 281. And then tomorrow night, that's going to be, pardon me, that should say Wednesday, I beg your pardon. And then that's going to be the uh, severe threat there. Now, as far as the next couple of days, 90 tomorrow, windy, heavy rain tomorrow night as well. And then nice, pleasant mornings, nice afternoons, end of the week, end of the weekend. A great way to end of the week. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Right now we're at 621, 70 degrees. And Apple wants to make it easier for you to keep your information private. How are they doing that? Details when we return. I'm Erin. And I'm Margo. We've always done things our own way. Charted our own paths. I wasn't going to just back down from moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis wasn't going to change who I am. When I learned that my joint pain could mean permanent joint damage, I asked about Embril. Embril helps relieve joint pain and helps stop permanent joint damage. Plus, Embril helps skin get clearer in psoriatic arthritis. Ask your doctor about Embril so you can get back to your true self. Embril may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Embril if you have an infection like the flu. Visit Embril.com to see how your joint damage could progress. Embril. Eligible patients may pay as little as $5 per month. A new privacy tool for Apple, its operating system will let users choose if you want your online activity tracked and sold to third-party apps. Experts say it may be a double-edged sword, placing the power in customers' hands in terms of privacy, but may also hurt Facebook and the small businesses that benefit from ads on Facebook. And Zoom launching a new feature with a look and feel of an actual in-person meeting. The video background is called Immersive View, and it places all the attendees in the same realistic-looking virtual location. Finally, some MIT researchers found cities with rideshare companies like Uber and Lyft have an increase in traffic jams, and the congestion lasts longer. The study links a decline in public transportation use with ride-sharing companies. Interesting. Time now is 625 and about 70 degrees. More and more people continue to be vaccinated against the coronavirus, but are you still working from home? Coming up next half hour, we'll tell you how your home could be keeping you from getting more work done. And we have an update to a story we first reported on GMSA. We're going to hear from the family who lost their home in a devastating house fire. And outside with TransGuide right now, Samuel King will get you updated on your morning commute thus far. You're watching GMSA. Robbed and then run over. That is what police say happened to a man here on the west side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. A San Antonio family speaking out for the first time since losing their home in a devastating fire. You'll hear what they have to say. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It's rain here and there, but maybe some more severe rain later on. We're going to check in with Mike right now. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday, April 27th. 
Thanks for joining us this morning. Go ahead and grab an umbrella or a light jacket because we have sprinkles and rain in some parts. And we do. And Mike's talking about the risk for severe weather. And the first chance of that is tonight. Tonight. Tonight okay. and also uh, tomorrow night. Throughout the day, most of it's going to be like what we're seeing right now. A couple of little showers here and there, perhaps a thunderstorm or two. So, yeah, like Stephanie was talking about, a good idea to take your, your rain jacket or an umbrella today. And uh, we also have a little bit of fog thrown on in there. So you can see the kind of murky conditions off there in the distance. Distance. Temperature right now has been holding pretty steady right around 70 degrees, fluctuating a degree or two, and then that number's up to 68 dew point. That means you walk outside and you definitely feel the humidity. At least some of this humidity is going to be and is getting squeezed out in the form of rain. Most of it, as you can see, is just, uh, just on the light side, enough to make the roads kind of damp. And we've had showers off and on all morning long, so just assume that as you head off to work and school this morning, uh, roads are going to be on the wet side. Visibility, four miles Port SA now. It's dropped a little bit. Castroville, mile and a quarter. Kerrville, mile and three quarters. Three out there at the airport. A little bit more heading off in toward portions of the uh, hill country as far as some reduced visibility. Mold is high. Pecan is moderate. I think we're finally on the uh, tail end of the oak season. A couple of showers around this morning and maybe a thunderstorm this afternoon. Rain chances are not that great going in through the mid to late afternoon hours. But then tonight, that's when we're going to be seeing the storms start to fire up in portions of the hill country working their way to the east. Some of those could be on the strong to severe side. High wind and large hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. Tomorrow about the same situation. Thunderstorms, especially late tomorrow and then in the wee hours of Thursday morning. Also tomorrow now other than just a you know a thunderstorm with some heavy brief heavy downpours could see some uh, heavy rain tomorrow night late into early early Thursday morning beyond that great forecast those details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Samuel King you know despite this rain it doesn't seem like there's been a lot of big problems out there but we are starting to uh, see some Mike as more people get out and about uh, on the roads first to look at the uh, travel time 24 minutes and I 10 coming in from burning 29 minutes starting to tick up there coming in from Bulverde on 281 and 26 minutes uh, from New Braunfels and downtown. This is I 35 North at loop 410. We've been having some issues on the east side this morning and see uh, traffic uh, building there in the lanes approaching uh, you on the screen. We have uh, one crash here in the northeast side. This is Thousand Oaks Drive at I 35, not on the interstate itself on Thousand Oaks, so you can see uh, the red there. So just watch out for that. Uh, we had a crash earlier, Loop 410 northbound, just north of I-10 East, but now we still have uh, some delays there starting a little earlier than they normally do. Also, look, look at this, a lot of uh, crashes there uh, on the map, three of them at least. Uh, we had one here, 281 at uh, Bulverde Road. That has uh, cleared now, so that's starting to improve there, but we do have a couple on the west side, including this one here, Petrenko in Loop 1604. Again, the good thing is this is not on the interstate, uh, but it is on Petrenko. I know a lot of people uh, use Petrenko there, so just keep that in mind. Slow down. We are starting to see uh, the crashes pick up a little bit as more people get on the road. So just uh, take it easy, plan for some extra time, and you'll get to where you're going safely. And we'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. Some people on the west side got an alarming wake up call. A man knocking on their door saying he'd been shot. A call from those people then brought police to the 1500 block of West Travis. Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that it looks like the man was a victim of a robbery. That's what police tell us, that someone stole his car from him. But it turns out he may not have been shot after all. Police say instead it looks like he was run over by a car. Either way, they had him sent to a hospital by ambulance while they stayed behind investigating this crime. Police say the man knocked on the door of a home around four this morning, asking the people inside for help. He later told officers that he was sitting in his car here in the 1500 block of West Travis. He says a group of people suddenly jumped him, beat him up and took his car, running over him as they left. The police say although he thought that he was shot, it turns out that the man uh, did not have any signs of gunshot wounds, but they say he did have a bad case of road rash, indicating that he had been dragged by a car. Police were not able to offer a description of the suspect's car or the man's car that was stolen. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Cleanup is underway at a Northwest Side Chinese restaurant following an early morning fire. It happened around 3 this morning at Lee's Garden Chinese restaurant in the 7200 block of Wurzbach near Babcock. While the cause of the fire has not yet been officially determined, firefighters say it looks like it's not suspicious and the restaurant's friars are most likely to blame. The nearby businesses will also have some smoke to be aired out this morning. Also new this morning, police are investigating a robbery at a QT store in the 10,100 block of West Military. That's on the far west side near SeaWorld. Police tell us a man wearing a ski mask robbed the clerk at gunpoint just before 2 this morning. The suspect was able to run off after getting cash. Police are still looking for the man. 635 right now, the month of April is Child Abuse Awareness Month. It's an issue that has impacted our community in a big way. According to the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, child abuse cases rose 18% in 2020 compared to the year before. As EZ Thermeto shows us, the relationship between domestic violence and child abuse can't be ignored. It is a tremendous problem in the San Antonio community. Child abuse cases on the rise, along with intimate partner violence. You may not think the two go hand in hand, but Marta Pelais, CEO of Family Violence Prevention Services, says they indeed do. Domestic violence and child abuse coexist. When there is the one you can rest assured 100% of the time there is the other. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, research indicates children who are exposed to domestic violence are at an increased risk of being abused or neglected, with an estimated 3 to 10 million children exposed to domestic violence each year. The key to fixing the problem lies in awareness and education. There needs to be more education so that people, the community, knows that this is what happens to the next generation when they have been in the presence of domestic abuse. And with the pandemic nearing an end, experts say be on the lookout for warning signs in children. Once routines return to normal, there will be more opportunities for reporting suspected abuse. It's never too early, but it can be too late. To learn more about child abuse during the pandemic, its impact, and what can be done moving forward, join us for a live stream town hall on Wednesday, April 28th at 2 p.m. That's tomorrow. Join Patty Santos and I as we take your questions to the experts. Easy Romero, KSAT 12 News. So along with the pandemic came the potential for an increase in child abuse and neglect in our community. ECs and Patty will be discussing the issue with a panel of experts this Wednesday and coming up tomorrow afternoon. ECs Romero and Patty Santos will be discussing the issue with a panel of experts. They'll be on hand to answer your questions and explain the signs of abuse, how to report it and where to seek help. Our KSAC Community Child Abuse, Child Abuse Awareness Town Hall is again this Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. You can stream it live on, uh, on KSAT.com or our KSAT TV app. And now to an update to a story we first brought you yesterday on GMSA. One Northeast Side family thankful to be alive after their home went up in flames while they were sleeping. Morgan Siebert and her fiance Patrick Boyce said they woke up to the sound of a fire alarm. They said it was perfect timing that saved their lives as well as the lives of their children and pets. The home is destroyed and what remains of the house will have to be demolished by the end of the week. But the family says they are thankful for the love and support of their family that's keeping them positive. It's just stuff. Everything's replaceable. You can't replace people's lives. You can't replace your pets, but you can replace your stuff and get up, move on. I mean, sometimes life throws you curveballs. It happens. Life is more important than stuff. So hold the ones you love a little bit closer. At this time, the cause for the fire is still unknown. The family is staying with relatives who are raising money for support. If you'd like to help the family, you can visit this story on our website at KSAT.com. Federal health officials giving more information about Johnson & Johnson's coronavirus vaccines as more doses become available. 32 states, including Texas, are once again administering the vaccine. And along with it comes a new CDC fact sheet warning about the risks of extremely rare blood clots. CDC has concluded the vaccine's benefits outweigh the risks. Of the 8 million J&J &J doses given, the CDC says 15 women suffered blood clots, though they were never conclusively linked to the vaccine itself.
WellMed set to resume giving the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine at two sites beginning tomorrow. They have nearly 2,000 available. Their vaccine is given at both the Elisa Trevino Lopez Senior One Stop Center on Culebra and the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Center on Southwest Military Drive. Appointments can be made online or by calling the number on your screen. That's 833-968-1745. A new story from the Business Journal is trending right now over at KSET.com. You may have noticed that San Antonio has been growing in recent years, and you also may have noticed a new site in the San Antonio skyline. That's because a brand new 20-story luxury hotel has opened on the Riverwalk. It includes 162 guest rooms and 33 suites with stunning views. For more details on the new hotel, you can head over again to KSAT.com. Right now it's 640 on your Tuesday morning. So are you one of the many who are still working from home? If so, you may be finding it hard to stay motivated. Why experts say the way your home is decorated could be the reason why. That's coming up next on GMSA. Well, it turns out I may have to get rid of the beanbag chairs after all. Did you know the way your home is decorated may play a role in your productivity? New study from one poll, half of Americans accomplish more when they are facing a blank wall in their home. And 53% say they can't listen to music or podcasts while working because it's too distracting. And if something in the room is out of place, 66% say they can't think about anything else until it's fixed. That's because a person's emotions and mood are impacted by their surroundings. One in four people said their mood changed depending on their environment. So experts say a majority of people say having a tidy room that smells good helps them stay on top of their work. The study also found a working from home can make it difficult for people to unwind. Most say having a designated routine or area in their home can help them de-stress from the workday. Researchers say the color of your room can determine your productivity and creating a space that's both productive yet relaxing can be a challenge, but simple changes in an environment can powerfully impact mood and productivity. When it comes to decorating your home, the pandemic caused a high demand for home office equipment, but the study found comfort is still most important to Americans. Experts say you might consider how something feels, sounds and smells before we actually go out and buy it. I think a lot of people are going through that right now, especially, you know, people who had set up a temporary set up and now it's kind of like maybe a long term setup need to make some changes. Absolutely. 645 right now. Let's see how the roads are looking with our traffic expert Samuel King. Well, Mark, it's definitely we'll start with the some travel times. 28 minutes if you're coming in on 37 from the Pleasanton area. Still 19 minutes coming in on US 90 from Castroville and 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle. Traffic building at 410 and State Highway 151 northbound. You can kind of see the uh, the clouds and, and the mist and everything there. So we're not seeing too many uh, problems here, but we are in other uh, parts uh, of the area. Varying uh, crashes of varying severity, including a couple here in the northeast side now on 35. Uh, this one on Thousand Oaks and 35. Uh, more of the issues on Thousand Oaks. Actually, we did have a slight delay there on 35 southbound. Uh, that has cleared up for the moment. New crash reported down here on 35 northbound at AT&T Center Parkway. So we'll see how that's going to impact uh, traffic a little bit later. Looking at 410, had a crash earlier there, and we're also seeing some delays. Southbound, you look good, 12 minutes uh, between 35 and 37, but 16 minutes northbound from 37 to 35. Just again, to underscore, it is sort of still wet out there. Even it might not be raining uh, where you are, the roads might be wet. So that's just something to uh, watch out for uh, today, folks, as uh, as we get more into the morning commute. We're already seeing uh, crashes pick up a little more than they normally uh, do around this time of morning. Yes, be careful out there. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, are you inspired by the eyewear here? <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's just cute. one of those pictures that you gotta. I mean, it's just too cute not to look at that little pup. Aww. The sun, future so bright, gotta wear shades and sunscreen too. Don't forget that. But yeah, great picture, it's adorable. Thank you so much for the KSAT Connect shot. Yeah, we go from that beautiful picture to this just kind of yucky looking shot there, and you can see there is some fog around the area. With and you know Sam was just talking about and so showed some of the Transguide cameras, the wet roads. We've had a few little sprinkly showers, and even though as you mentioned it's not raining right now, just assume the roads are damp and they're pretty much going to be staying damp. We'll have some of these showers off and on throughout the day. A couple of thunderstorms thrown in as well. Uh, Visibility is about the same 
Lima at the airport. It's improved slightly Castroville as well as Burning Stage, but there is some fog around, so watch it, especially going out 10. And again, throughout the rest of today, a couple of showers here and there, maybe some uh, mist and drizzle roads are going to stay kind of damp, and then it's tonight when those storms start developing out there in parts of the hill country. Some of those, um, there's a there's a decent chance some are going to be on the uh, the nasty side. High winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats with that, and that will be the situation into you know, about midnight. Notice how the trend is, or at least this model has things further up to the north and in, in mostly in the hill country. That doesn't mean there won't be anything further south, but that's kind of the general location for it. Then tomorrow we've got uh, just a couple of showers around the area, one or two throughout the day. And then by the evening hours, more start to get going, more potential for severe weather. And then also there's the potential tomorrow night late into Thursday for some heavy rain. And that's especially in parts of the uh, hill country where we could see a lot of very heavy rain. Leftover showers into Thursday. Then in behind that, things are going to be clearing out pretty nicely around here. And humidity is going to be dropping down. We'll have some pleasant, almost coolish mornings to end up the week and start the weekend. And uh, you can see some of that cooler air is going to try and slide on in here. There's the big low, which is working its way across here and out ahead of it. It's really getting things kind of kind of churned up around here. And then as that moves through, it does pull that bit of a front through. So we get into this kind of northerly flow with that high off of California there. And that's going to give us the beautiful weather to finish up the week and go on into the weekend. So today we're going to make it up into the upper 70s at noon. A couple of showers. Maybe a thunderstorm. Same thing later on this afternoon. Rain chances aren't that great through most of the afternoon. Just a few showers here and there. Damp roads, 83 high temperature. And then tonight things start to uh, really get going. And that's when the severe threat is there. So uh, the hill country west of 35 to 81 has the slight risk for severe weather and the marginal risk in portions of the metropolitan area. And then that gets expanded a little bit more. And this is Wednesday night. Uh, tomorrow night and again high winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats 90 tomorrow is going to be hot and humid and that's setting the stage for these uh, heavier potential strong thunderstorms and then we've got good looking weekend but we have to get through tonight and right. tomorrow first. tonight and tomorrow night all right okay. find a spot in the garage for your car if you yep. can 650 about 70 degrees and what would you consider a vacation disaster? Not having Wi-Fi or losing your luggage? Tomorrow on GMSA, a look at a new study that shows nearly half of Americans prioritize internet access on their vacation. Outside with Live Cam, we'll check back in with Samuel King over in the Traffic Lab and get the news you need to know before you go. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the new mask guidelines expected from the CDC. What that could mean for wearing masks outdoors. President Biden, meanwhile, gearing up to address the nation about the pandemic. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. The kitchen's fryers at Lee's Garden Chinese restaurant on the northwest side are most likely to blame for an early morning kitchen fire. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. That's not the official cause, but the battalion chief on scene says the fire doesn't look suspicious and it's most likely the cause. Fire crews were called out to the 7200 block of Warsbach to Lee's Garden Chinese restaurant around 3 o'clock this morning. When they arrived, they saw smoke coming through the vent hood on the roof. Crews were able to quickly knock the fire out and contain it to the hood and a small part of the restaurant's kitchen. The restaurant sustained smoke damage and won't be able to open until that smoke is cleared out. It's estimated to be around $10,000 in damage. Other nearby businesses will also have to air out for some of that smoke damage. From the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. It's about five till. There are a couple of accidents earlier. Let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King. Thank you very much, Stephanie and Mark. First, to check the travel time. Still looking okay. 27 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, for instance. 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. This is 35 at Loop 410. Have uh, some issues on 35 uh, this morning. Traffic flowing pretty well here, uh, but we did have this crash here. Thousand Oaks, and again, that delay popping up. Also farther south on 35, northbound now going the other direction. Uh, you have some delays down to 52 miles per hour approaching that crash scene. Looking uh, throughout the area, also some issues uh, downtown and a crash still reported in Babcock on the west side, Mike.
Yeah, and we still have a, well, a lot of fog around the area as well. Plus, it hasn't been or it has been raining all morning long, even though it's not raining now, maybe where you live. We'll keep some of these showers around here throughout the rest of today. Reduced visibility, not pea soup, but just kind of take it easy. 83 for a high temperature, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. And later on tonight is when we start to see the better chance for potentially severe storms. Likewise, tomorrow night, windy the next couple of days. Then we finish up the week. Beautiful kind of coolish actually in the morning, beautiful afternoons, plenty of sunshine and great start to the month of May. But you want to make sure you stay tuned tonight and high wind hail or the possibilities, Mike? Yes, large hail, high winds. Thank you, sir. Be careful out there. Thank you for joining us. See you back here at nine.